welcome back to dentistry and more so today we have a new session on uh, our continuation of fluorides so today's topic is systemic fluoride so systemic fluoride is about how fluoride is used by a person uh, we can use it by two methods one is systemic route and the, another one is topical routes so today's video will cover the systemic fluorides and its methods its uh, advantages the mechanism uh, the next video i'll be covering about the topical fluorides so in systemic fluorides as the name suggests its the root of administration is systemic uh, and its uh, effect on the teeth is different uh, compared to the topical one so let's move on to the topic so let's see what are the contents uh, how it is working uh, types and uh, water fluidation studies, uh, school and salt, milk fluidation and uh, other supplements which includes tablets, lozenges and other things. So systemic fluorides, it provides a very low concentration of fluoride to the teeth for a longer period of time. Mostly the systemic fluoride works till six or seven years. Why? Because it uh, affects the mineralization stages of teeth so mineralization stages completes by seven years that is the second molars the second last tooth of our eruption sequence second last tooth is second molar it gets mineralized by the age of six or seven so the systemic fluoride should use this potential after that, there is no point for systemic fluoridation because it goes to our bloodstream, it enters to our bloodstream. <laughs> Sorry. Then uh, this fluoride enters to the teeth while it's getting mineralized and it gives a firm structure to the firm, hard structure to the enamel. So it becomes resistant to dental caries. That is the uh, rational behind this systemic fluoridation. So it should be before six to seven years so once the teeth erupts fluoride contacts the teeth through the salivary secretion but that is a topical effect so that is systemic fluorides so i have mentioned you about the uh, its mechanism it goes to the developing stages of teeth until six or seven years and it replaces the hydroxyl ion in the enamel lattice and replaces uh, replaced with the fluoride it makes the enamel lattice more stronger so that is the mechanism so we have various types of systemic fluorides the common one is water fluoridation then salt milk and fluoride tablets in water fluoridation we have community and school water fluoridation so it's all we are consuming inside it enters the systemic circulation so let's see a brief uh, intro of all these mechanisms water fluoridation commonly we use one ppm that is one parts per million in salt or school water fluoridation it ranges from two to three ppm because uh, the amount of water consumed by the school children will be low and the amount of the days uh, the children's attend will be less compared to uh, community water fluoridation because community water fluoride supplies water to the house so we tend to drink more water from the house than compared to the school so to get a 1 ppm effect we need to have more uh, increase uh, increase the ppm or concentration of fluoride because of the less intake in salt or school water fluoridation milk again it is uh, comparatively very less consumption than the salt or school water so it has to be 5 ppm to get a 1 ppm net effect and we have some other supplements like uh, fluoride tablets uh, APF, sodium fluoride and other stuff. So by definition, it is the upward adjustment of concentration of fluoride. So we are increasing the amount of fluoride. 
to get an optimal level so as to give a maximum protection against dental caries. So it is a poor adjustment of the concentration of fluoride in community water supply to achieve a maximum caries reduction and clinically insignificant level of fluorosis. So we are giving an upward adjustment. So defluidation we will be learning uh, in the future videos. So that will be downward adjustment. So water fluidation is always upward adjustment. Presently the fluoride amount will be very less. So we increase the amount of fluoride. So water fluidation is one of the common delivery mechanisms because of its low cost and long range. The problem is always we need to uh, control the ppm of water and it depends on the regional temperature. If it is a hot climate or hot uh, region, we have to give less ppm and it on a colder climate, we have to increase the ppm. So the optimal, as I mentioned, it should be one ppm or one parts per million. It gives a 50 to 70 percentage of reduction from the dental caries. So we have seen the history of uh, fluoride, how history of fluoride evolved and ultimately reached to the uh, water fluidation. So we have some water fluidation studies. So it uh, proves that the water fluidation mechanism would definitely reduce the caries by 40 to 60 percentage. So the first water fluidation program was started in United States in 1945. That was Grand Rapids Muskegon study, the Newburgh, Kingston, Evanston Oak Park, Branford, Sarnia, Stratford study and Teal Bloomberg study. So all these studies are very important uh, with respect to the fluidation, water fluidation. First study we need we you not to uh, go very in detail about all these studies. You just need to know what time it started, what was the percentage uh, reduction, and how much duration was it. So it started in 1945 in Grand Rapids. That was the water fluidation city, and Muskegon was kept as controlled. After six years, the caries reduction was 50 percentage compared to the control city. Okay, so that is the first study, Grand Rapid and Muskegon City, Muskegon study. So always the first city will be the intervention city and the second name will be the control city. The reduction was 50 percentage and after six years, started 1945, checked 1951. Okay, so the second study, Newburgh, Kingston. Newburgh was the intervention and Kingston was the control. It started in 1945 after 10 years. The reduction was 23.5 to 13.9 percentage. So the next study is Evanston Oak Park, 1946. The intervention was at Evanston. And Illinois and the nearby community Oak Park acted as a control term. So it was 14 years of fluidation and the reduction was 49 percentage. So Evanston was a Intervention City, Oak Park and Illinois were the control cities. The Branford, Sarnia, Stratford study. So Branford was the uh, intervention. It was in Canada. So 1945. So Sarnia along with Stratford were kept as a control. So after 17 years of fluidation, the Branford, Branford and uh, Brantford were reported, Brantford and this Stratford controls were reported, 50% uh, of lower than the control. So, this was the intervention, this way, these two were the controls, so 55% of reduction of caries was reported at intervention, that is uh, Brantford city. Steel Columberg was, steel was, uh, in study was in 1953 steel was uh, fluoridated, columbar was kept as control and after 13 years it was 58 percentage reduction in the intervention city that is steel. So those were the water fluoridation studies. Most of the studies reported around 50 to 60 percentage of reduction of dental caries. So how the temperature affects uh, this fluoride level that is uh, 
we are going to discuss. We have said the optimal level is not exactly one. It ranges from 0 0.7 to 1.2 because when it is very high temperature or the temperature of this area or the water is more, we have to give very less amount. That is 0 0.7 is fine. And the colder side, we have to give 1.2 ppm. So it is based on a formula that is Galgan's formula that is 0 0.34 divided by E. E is minus 0 0.038 plus 0 0.0062x temperature of the area. So we have to multiply into temperature. So E is coming at the denominator. So always temperature is inversely proportional to the amount of flow rate. So what are the pre-requirements of a water fluidation? So there should be some significant amount of caries in community and a level of fluoride concentration should be low. There should be centralized water supply and there should be acceptance from the community and there will be huge installation and maintenance cost. So this is important because uh, these are the three mechanisms or the equipments used for water fluidation that is dry feeder, solution feeder and saturation method. In dry feeder, the amount, the compounds such as ammonium silica fluoride and flow spar sodium silica fluoride is used. Solution feeder is hydrofluorosilicic acid. So three mechanisms. This is a mechanism used for water fluidation or the equipments, fluoride equipments, dry feeder, solution feeder and saturation feeder. How fluoride is mixed to the water, community water. So then the saturation system, the last system, what we are doing is 4% saturated solution of sodium fluoride. It is injected at desired concentration in the water distribution using a pump. So 4% solution of sodium fluoride is injected to the water. In dry feeder, the sodium fluoride or silica fluoride in the form of powder is introduced and dissolved. So here it is a solution, here it is powder, that's why dry feeder, this is saturated system. And solution feeder is volumetric pump permitting the addition of a given quantity. So it, we use a pump, volumetric pump and put hydrofluorosilicic acid in proportion to the water of uh, water, what we are going to treat. So this is a volumetric pump mechanism and uh, dry feeder is different where we add powder into this dissolving basin and saturator is solution we inject with a pump so what are the advantages of water fluidation because it can give benefit to a very large number of people because it is mixed in a community water supply an entire city can be prevented carries by 50 percentage so it it not just act systemically but also it has a topical effect through the release of saliva so it has definitely a systemic effect it enters to the blood circulation and it goes to the teeth formation similarly it has a saliva effect so it always keep replenishing the lost minerals or lost fluoride from the tooth so it has a topical and systemic effect so fluoridation of community is the least expensive way to provide fluoride to a large group of people. So it is the least because even though it has a very big amount of installation cost, considering the large population it serves, it becomes the least expensive way. But on the other side, we have some disadvantages and one is the ethical issue because ultimately once we start a community water supply, all the people in that community are bound to drink that water. There is no choice of rejection. If I don't want to drink that particular water for any reason, uh, I'm not, uh, I can't do that because the water supply is coming to my uh, house and I'm bound to drink that particular water. So human uh, rights is violated here, the right to reject is violated the ethical issues are there and uh, we have other modes uh, which is not considered here 
and common source of water supply if it is not there it, this is not possible it has to be there has to be a central supply of water then only this will be uh, possible so what we have seen is a community water supply that is a community a common centralized water is mixed with fluoride by any of the methods dry feeder solution feeder or the saturator saturator feeder system and all of the community people drinking that water the next is cool water fluidation now we are mixing the fluoride to the school water tank okay so school water fluidation in the beginning i told you the amount of ppm will be high because the number of hours a student spends in the school is less and the amount of water he drinks is also less so to get a 1 ppm net effect he has to drink a water with as more ppm or 3 3.5 ppm water if he drinks then only that 1 ppm net effect he would get so usually uh, 3 to 4 4 to 5 ppm so it ranges between 3 4 5 so usually these are the these are the reasons because of the short period of stay at school to compensate for holidays and vacations so it first started in 1954 at st thomas Saint virgin islands so there it started so it has to be at a higher level of ppm so we can give four to five ppm to compensate their shorter period and holidays and vacations so usually we give four to five that's 4.5 times or four to five ppm normally it is one ppm so i have to give four or five times more so it also gives reduction 20 to 25 to 40 percentage so advantage is good result minimal equipments and not very expensive but the disadvantage is uh, children do not receive the benefit until they go to school because they go to school by the age of five by that time most of the teeth are already mineralized so we are not able to use the pre-eruptive mineralization cycle that is the ultimate uh, aim of this uh, systemic fluidation because we have to get uh, fluoride incorporated into the tooth while it gets mineralized so that finishes by six years or seven years so what if if the child goes to school at five years so most of the teeth maybe molars and premolars are already mineralized left is uh, second molars and canines so the major portion of the major parts or the major tooth are already mineralized so that is the one problem and next is not all children go to the school some from the poor countries and towns village they don't go to the school so amount of water drink also can't be regulated some people drink water some people don't drink so students drinking habit is not regularized yeah, we can't monitor it so some people may get the benefit some people may not so all these problems are there with regard of this uh, school water fluidation so next we have salt fluidation salt fluidation is started by Westby in Switzerland 1948 so in 1955 onwards they started selling fluoride salt so usually sodium or potassium fluoride is mixed with salt so it is like 90 milligram of fluoride per kilogram of salt or 250 to 350 milligram per kilogram so it can be added by two processing known as one is batch processing and the continuous processing so for the better caries prevention fluoride must be present in anic form when salt is dissolved in water that is sodium chloride so it should be uh, ionic form that fluoride has to be at its ionic form when the sodium chloride is dissolved in water then only this caries prevention will happen so we can uh, as the, there are essentially two different salt production process like batch processing and continuous processing so one method is fluoride is added to the salt by spraying concentrated solution of sodium fluoride or potassium fluoride so the solution is directly spread to the salt sodium fluoride or potassium fluoride 
we spray it on the normal salt or we have granules of sodium fluoride and calcium fluoride so premix granules of sodium fluoride and calcium fluoride with phosphate are added to the common salt either the granules or just spray so advantages it is safe and it does not require community water supply as in case of uh, water fluoridation we can uh, we there's no need of uh, any centralized supply uh, and it has no ethical issues if somebody doesn't want he can reject it it's low cost so all these are the advantages and disadvantages uh, the main problem is uh, sodium is always associated with hypertension and, um, and there is international effort to reduce the intake of sodium and there is no precise control how much salt it varies from person to person so we cannot just uh, regulate the amount being consumed the next one is milk fluoridation it started by Ziegler salt was started by Vespi this was started by Ziegler and both are in Switzerland okay so this is like uh, mixing uh, fluoride into water so it gives uh, additional benefits because already milk has some benefits it gives calcium and vitamin D for uh, kids along with fluoride also will be added beneficial uh, rational is nothing but the nutritional value and it gives a uh, milk products are very good for their teeth and bones so added benefit will be given if it is fluoridated so how we distribute milk uh, we can uh, distribute uh, through the school system uh, and like school milk program or such programs will be there for kindergarten or nursery schools so either uh, fluoridated milk can be produced like one liquid pasteurized and sterilized or powder can be mixed into this uh, this uh, milk so just like salt uh, continuous and batch processing is there milk also we can either use in a form of liquid or powder So all these are the products which can be used calcium fluoride sodium fluoride isodium monofluorophosphate and disodium silico fluoride so after that we have fluoride supplements like tablets drops uh, lozenges so these are not uh, commonly available over the counter but uh, can be prescribed by a dentist or pediatrician so it has to be uh, these all are supplements most commonly used is sodium fluoride it has to be at a range of 0.25 milligram or 0.5 milligram or 1 milligram and they should be taken on a daily basis so this is a, a chart which we can uh, which can be uh, used to calculate the amount of fluoride be given to a particular child so this is the amount of fluoride existing in the fluoride uh, water that is the water which we drink or the child drinks so if the particular um, child drinks water with a amount of less than 0.3 ppm and its age is less than six months we don't need to supplement anything and if the age between six months to three years we can give 0.25 gram additional and up to 6 years 0.5 gram and 6 to 16 years 1 gram we can give an additional and if the water supply is less than 6 ppm and greater than 0.3 ppm we don't need to uh, supplement uh, up to 3 years 3 to 6 years we can give 0.25 and 6 to 16 years we can give 0.5 gram supplement additionally if the water Mm, drinking water has more than 6 ppm we don't need to supplement uh, fluoride for that particular child so there are so much benefits for uh, these uh, tablets uh, lozenges and drops which gives a reduction 16 to 65 percentage because it has both systemic and topical effects
uh, we should always take precautions uh, because of the toxicity because toxicity will be covered in detail on the next video so that's all about uh, fluorides that is systemic fluorides i was uh, explaining about the various fluoridation studies and various mechanisms studies were important and why and how this is uh, getting uh, getting into this uh, tooth lattice at what age it gives the protection up to six years why systemic fluoride works beyond that it won't have any much effect because teeth mineralization of tooth will be completed almost up to second molar completed by six to seven years so why this uh, fluoride ppm is different for water fluoridation and salt or milk fluoridation this is community water fluoridation has one ppm but school this salt milk has four to five ppm because the amount and uh, duration of uh, consumption is very different com compared to community because community we will be drinking 24 by 7 unlike school salt or milk fluoridation and uh, various studies we have many studies uh, all we need to remember the intervention city control city the year the duration and the percentage of protection then the fluoride equipments how we add fluoride into community water supply that is dry feeder solution feeder and saturated methods and various advantages and the disadvantages school water fluoridation it will be four to five ppm that is four or five times greater and why the reason it was started in 1954 next is salt fluoridation and batch process and continuous process its advantages and disadvantages milk fluoridation its advantages and uh, liquid and powder application and various methods droplets uh, lozenges and tablets it should be daily taken and this table given by american dental association if drinking water has this much ppm we should supplement this amount of ppm to get maximum protection against dental caries okay so that's all about uh, systemic fluoridation and systemic fluoridation uh, the unfortunate part is nowadays uh, very few countries are following system of fluoridation because researchers uh, has confirmed that the net effect of water fluoridation and topical fluoridation is almost same the caries reduction is almost same for water fluoridation and uh, that is systemic fluoridation and topical fluoridation system fluoridation requires a lot of installation charges where topical fluoridation can be achieved by a single toothpaste so why to waste so much uh, investment time and manpower for community water fluoridation and it violates uh, human rights so from 1970 onwards uh, most of the systemic fluoridation that is community water fluoride plants were closed because of the ethical issues and uh, installation and maintenance charge and nowadays uh, the topical effect is more concentrated than the systemic effect because uh, most of the time uh, we think about systemic effect but nowadays the researchers are stressing on the topical effect because to always keep an amount of fluoride in the saliva and gcf that gives a continuous a protective effect against caries uh, than the systemic effect but then that was a very recent uh, invention but uh, still 1970 it was believed that the water fluoridation was the best method and um, that's all about uh, systemic fluoridation so i'll come up with a uh, topical fluoridation on my next video so thank you